The Mianus River Gorge Preserve, over 750 acres of quiet woodlands nestled within suburban communities in Lower New York. Despite being only an hour's drive north of the bustling streets of New York City, the Mianus River Gorge feels entirely removed from our fast-paced modern lives. The Mianus River drains roughly 40 square miles of land in New York and Connecticut winding its way through a handful of nature preserves and parks before emptying into Long Island Sound. Among the conservation land that surrounds this river, the Mianus River Gorge is perhaps the most unique. In the 1950s, residents of Bedford, New York learned that the tract of land surrounding their nearby stretch of the Mianus River was being targeted for development. Determined to halt the plans, they appealed to a new and little-known nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving natural places, the Nature Conservancy. Together, they purchased 60 acres of land, ensuring that development could not ensue. This collaborative effort was the first act of the Nature Conservancy that involved acquiring land for the sole purpose of protection and research. Today, the Nature Conservancy has grown to protect well over 100 million acres of land across five continents becoming a key international player in promoting the preservation of natural resources. Between the jungles, deserts, wetlands, coral reefs, and glaciers that the Conservancy safeguards all over the world, it's almost hard to believe that it all started here, at a cozy expanse of old growth forest beside the Mianus River. These days, an independent, not-for-profit organization has stepped forward to administer and protect the Mianus River Gorge. Had no nonprofit status, so they needed somebody to be able to kind of, somebody who could take donations and, uh, and then run the mine back here so it could be used for the preserve. So the Nature Conservancy um, volunteered to do that and say, okay, we'll be the first project, we'll take donations, and then we'll use, give you the money to work for the preserve. Um, we operated that way for a long time, but then uh, in the late 90s we became a separate nonprofit organization. Uh, so now we're kind of loosely affiliated with uh, the Nature Conservancy. We have a management agreement with the Nature Conservancy, so any property that's still owned by them we manage, plus we have other land that's under our name which we manage. So we manage the whole preserve, we work with the Nature Conservancy on some issues, we're technically not you know, connected to them anymore other than a, kind of a loose affiliation. Rod Christie is the executive director at the preserve, and he's intimately familiar with the tradition of science-based management that characterizes this unique stretch of the Mianus. I think this, this whole organization, which is 50 plus years old, has been founded on research. In fact, the first original person who started the whole preserve, Gloria Annabel, was actually a researcher. She was an oceanographer that went down with William, William Beebe in a little ball called the bathosphere. And she went down and she held the, the the dive, the longest dive for a woman for many, many years. So she was based and brought up on research and um, kind of brought together scientists to preserve this place in the beginning. Um, and, and then I think science kind of came in and out of this while well, we preserved land. Um, and now we've kind of really, in the last 10 years, we've really promoted the research capacity of it. Elsewhere, it's not uncommon for areas undergoing research studies to be closed off to public entry. But here, avid hikers will be happy to discover that scenic trails stretch a few miles down the gorge, offering beautiful views of the natural treasures protected within. Research director Mark Weckel is an expert on the plants and animals at the Mianus River Gorge and oversees many of the trailside projects conducted here that are revealing insights into the complex interplay between forest species. I'm standing in front of one of four deer disclosures that we set up over the last 10 years. Uh, the purposes of our exclosures are, are many actually. One, we try to protect any remaining species that haven't been damaged by the overpopulation of deer we have at the gorge. Two, to protect any seed bank. Uh, there may actually be wildflowers that we've lost, but there's still viable seed in the soil. Many can last as many as three to seven years. Uh, but we also wanted to see the impact once you remove deer from different types of our forest. Here I'm standing in front of our ex parking lot exclosure. It's closest to uh, cars closest to the houses and we wanted to see what it also has the most amount of exotic plants. The funny thing is is once we took deer out of the equation we got many of the natives to come back but so did some of the exotics. So many people don't realize that while deer are a problem causing exotic species they may also control them as well. 
and that's what we're seeing behind us. And this is only three years of growth, this bright green. Um, and we'll be monitoring this hopefully into perpetuity and one day we'd love to be able to take down the fences and use these exclosure populations to restore the species to uh, wildflower species to other parts of the gorge. Field research at the Minas River Gorge Preserve involves a wide range of organisms. But most studies don't have such an obvious footprint as the deer exclosures and are likely to go unnoticed by hikers. In fact, the hemlock trees that line the trails here are themselves a subject of investigation and experimentation. In the 1960s, a small insect known as the hemlock woolly adelgid began appearing in northeastern hemlock forests. The woolly adelgid is native to Asia, where it feeds in the sap of hemlocks, and its numbers are kept in check throughout its home range by natural predators. But when it was accidentally introduced to the eastern United States, it proved to be a serious problem for American hemlocks. Adelgid is a huge threat, huge. Um, basically every other preserve around here that's had hemlock, they're dead. Um, and why are the hemlocks here alive? My guess is because some of them are on ideal habitat, they're getting good moisture. Um, maybe there's other reasons, maybe we seem to have a buildup of predators here, natural predators that might not be found in other places. There's still healthy trees here and there's still new growth in hemlocks here. Um, so yeah, the Delgid has wiped out hemlock in this area all the way up to, it's now in southern Vermont. So if it gets to the leading edge of the Delgid gets Below, above that, it's going to cause some serious damage in northern New England. It's, the only thing that's really keeping it from expanding is cold. It's sensitive to cold, but that may change too. It may adapt to that as well. So. With little or no natural predators in this part of the world, the woolly adelgid has expanded its range rapidly, leaving entire hemlock forests heavily damaged in its wake. But all hope is not lost. In recent years, the Mianus River Gorge Preserve and many other state parks and preserves in the eastern U.S. have made attempts to import another insect from Asia, a small beetle that feeds on the adelgid. Yeah, we released at that time a biological control agent, which was a beetle that came from um, Japan, um, which feeds off this adelgid in its natural environment in Japan. And that was cultivated here in the United States and went through about four or five years of trials here in Canada and in Connecticut. Uh, and then was released here and a bunch of other sites as well to hopefully try to build up predator numbers against the Delta. And to be honest with you, you know, other than the first year where we actually found it the next year, so we know it overwintered, it's been very difficult to monitor that beetle to find out whether it's here or whether it's gone or whether it disappeared entirely because um, it's this little tiny, tiny, tiny little black beetle and it's way up in the treetops and that's a long way up. Despite the difficulty and uncertainty that invasive species may have introduced into the ecosystem here, the Mianus River Gorge Preserve is nonetheless alive with as many as 250 species of flowering plants. While many may have been impacted by growing deer populations, others thrive here at the Mianus just as they do across most of the Northeast. A series of small waterfalls on the hill here, which feed into the Mianus River, keep this entire area very moist, which makes an excellent habitat for the plants you see surrounding me here, the eastern skunk cabbage. Now, these plants are particularly fascinating because they're able to generate their own heat. So in the colder months of the year, January and February, when everything else is frozen, these are actually able to melt their way through the snow and begin developing in order to get the first crack at pollinating insects. But the forest and plants aren't the only natural treasures to be found here. Towards the southern boundaries of the preserve, Havemeyer Falls cascades down the gorge, emptying into the Mianus River just as it begins to widen into the mouth of the Barge Reservoir. Throughout the forest, hikers will also find familiar relics left over from the region's agricultural past. When walking through Mianus River Gorge, what you're going to notice is these series of stone walls that are zigzagging throughout this preserve. Now what these walls are is property lines for the old farming and grazing lands that once existed here many, many decades ago. Now the interesting and extraordinary thing about these stone walls 
suspect they were handmade. Times have changed since these stone walls were originally constructed, and the fields and pastures beside which they were built have long vanished, being replaced by the forest we enjoy today throughout much of the Mayanus River Gorge. Even the roughly 60 acres of old growth forest upon which the preserve was founded have changed. Just like the crumbling stone walls, the eldest hemlocks beside the Mayanus are subject to the ravages of time and the forces of nature. We had a very strong storm come through, I'd say about uh, three years ago, and it caused the trees to actually twist and then kind of just like dominoes cascade into each other. So we did lose some of our largest, oldest trees. These trees we core to be around 350 to 400 years old. Wow. We still have a couple of them left uh, that you can still see, but a lot of them we did lose. But for all of the challenges that lie ahead of the team here at the Mayanus River Gorge Preserve, some of the most pressing involve the Mayanus River itself. This uh, river is around 22 miles long, starting from Banksville, New York, and going down to the Long Island Sound. And back in the day, before this area was developed and was mostly farmland, it would take about 27 days for rainfall that fell anywhere up the uplands to drain to the sound. So now it takes about three. As houses were de uh, developed, a lot of these were in wetlands. Removing the wetlands has sped up the flow. But also, people also built ponds and along tributaries have removed all the vegetation. Hmm. So in addition to the water flowing faster, bad for erosion, bad for habitat in the river, it's also heated the river up. Typically this river should be around maybe the high 50s, maybe the low 60s. Perfect for brook trout, perfect for the macroinvertebrates that the brook trout need to live. But right now we measured the temperature in August that the upper reaches of our stretch of the river are 77 degrees. And on the lower, most pristine parts of our forest are around 66. So even the most pristine parts of our river are almost too high for brook trout. Part of our mission here is to try to educate people that the quality of the water, not only for the wildlife itself, but also we're a drinking supply. So cooler waters generally have less uh, bacteria growth. So we try to encourage them to actually revegetate their stream sides. Instead of just having a grass lawn that they cut, plant some shrubs, maintain the trees. This will cool down the river. Cool rivers have higher oxygen or macroinvertebrates, overall healthier even in drinking water. We have about, what, 170 neighbors, and they're right on our borders, and uh, most of them are, uh, you know, understand the preserve and understand what we stand for and protect it. It is a constant issue of stewardship, where you're having a good relations with your neighbors and, and take care of preserve and I think that gets solely greater as we add more neighbors to it. But uh, we still have a lot of rare wildflowers. Uh, we have you know pretty good diversity of species including coyotes, bobcats, fishers and some of the others uh, you know top predators that you wouldn't necessarily see in most urban suburban preserves. Certainly healthy diversity of uh, bird life. I think one of the neatest things about this preserve is when you come here, you get the sense that you're in this old growth forest. You get this feeling of being miles away from, you know, everywhere. If you'd like to learn more information or help support the research here at Mayans River Gorge Preserve, please visit www.mayans.org.